Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be heading into a faction that I haven't touched since the beginning of the previous season. Because we're going to go back into Squoyatel and today we're going to take a deep look into the Dwarves archetype. So it's time to get into the Zoltan Slammy deck. So as I just told you, the Sultan Slammy deck is of course filled to the brim with dwarves. And this deck is kind of focused on filling that one row of dwarves, boosting all of them as much as possible, and then capitalizing on that a little bit with a few final finisher cards. If you know how this archetype works, or you know what all of these lovely cards actually do, if you go through this list, this is the deck list. You can check that out in the Play Gwent website. The link is in the description down below. But if you know what all of these cards do, you can skip right ahead to the example matches using the timeline down below, and you can tell me what you think afterwards. But for those of you who don't and are here for the deep explanation into every single card, we're gonna go through these cards as usual, one by one. So the first one, the Mahakam Guard, starts at 3 power and on deploy he boosts himself by the number of allied dwarves on this row. So meaning that if you have 5 dwarves on a row he will boost himself up to 8. Which is basically a very nice 4 provision finisher card at the end of the round, giving you some extra points and this can easily reach up to uh, 10, well maximum of 12 points of course because of the 9 unit limit on a row, but this can go up to 12 because of that. But very very strong. Uh, card to use by the end of a the round. Then we have the Miner. The Miner starts at four provisions. Well, he, he just has four provisions. He starts at four power, that's what I wanted to say. And he has an order ability that allows you to boost an allied unit by two. If that unit that you're trying to boost is also a dwarf, you give it two armor on top of that. And that is what this deck focuses on, the armor part of dwarves. Because dwarves also get one armor in this deck because of the leader ability. I actually haven't talked about that just yet. But if we just quickly go up top, we use the Mahakam Forge leader ability, which, all, which gives all dwarves in your starting deck one armor as a default. So on top of every piece of armor that you see on the units in a minute, you will get one extra piece of armor, which is very handy for certain units, and I'll highlight them when we go along, that actually benefit from having more armor. With the order ability you also spawn and play tempering and tempering is a nature card that allows you to boost an ally by five and if it's a dwarf you boost it or you give it two armor as well. So basically similar to what the miner actually does. But we were looking at cards and the miners there's two miners in this deck so giving you a bit extra boost on top of that. Then we have the pyrotechnician. This guy loves to blow things up. He starts at four power and two armor but as I just said because of Mahakam Forge you actually get three armor on this unit and this is what of those units that actually benefits from having extra armor because he has an order ability that damages a random enemy and himself by four because he basically blows himself up um, but because he has armor if you give him uh, one extra piece of armor besides the tree that he already has he basically doesn't take any damage because the armor will take the hit um, and still gives you four damage on the opposite side of the board basically giving you eight points on a four provision card which is a lot for a four provision card then we got the Dwarf Berserker, another card that uh, benefits heavily from having armor. He starts at 3 power, 4 armor, in our case 5 armor, and if he is armored at the end of your turn he will damage himself by 1 and a random enemy unit by 1. So he loses 1 point of armor, but he will also damage an opposing enemy unit by 1, which is very very cool as a little bit of a random engine card. Uh, there's plenty of cards in this deck that also apply more armor, so you can definitely keep your Berserkers going if you want to. And speaking about armor, we have the Dwarven Chariot, 4 power and 1 armor. This doesn't get an extra point of armor because it's not a Dwarf, but it actually spawns Dwarves. So on deploy you spawn a Rowdy, a rowdy, rowdy, rowdy Dwarf on this row. Um, so a 2 power dwarf token, we'll see those a lot in a minute as well. And he actually has an order ability that gives an allied unit 1 armor. You can choose which one, so you can go to the berserkers, to the pyrotechnicians, any card that benefits from extra armor will be a nice target for this dwarven chariot. Because this order ability also resets every turn. So every turn, as long as the chariot is on the field, you can give one of your units an extra point of armor. Even if it's not on a berserker, this is definitely beneficial. You can protect all of your units with armor, uh, basically blocking your opponent from 
efficiently dealing damage because those points will go to waste on the armor. Then the Mahakam Volunteers. These guys uh, have four power, will also have one armor because of Mahakam Forge. And on deploy, they actually summon all copies from, well, themselves from the deck to that row. If you have a dwarf, you will always have a dwarf in this deck, so that's not a problem. And this is basically extra thinning, so it pulls that other Mahakam volunteer from the deck. There's actually a way to pulling both of them from the deck with one card. I'll talk about that in a minute. But this is basically thinning, giving you uh, less cards in your deck so you know what you're gonna pull in the later rounds. Then the Armorer's Workshop, one of the only uh, neutral cards in this deck. Uh, boosts three adjacent units by two and give them two armor. So basically giving you six points and six points of armor on top of all of that, which is very, very powerful in this deck specifically because of all the units that benefit from getting armor. Because we haven't talked about all of them just yet and you'll see more um, synergy with this card in the future. Then Barclay Elves, our first gold card, six provisions, four power, and on the boy he boosts an allied unit by the number of dwarves in this row. Um, includes himself as well, so if you have five dwarves and him on that row, you can choose which unit you want to boost by six. It's basically the same thing as the cards, but you can choose where the boost goes. He doesn't boost himself, you can choose another unit to boost, which is uh, sometimes good to keep a defender alive or something like that. Uh, and again, a very good finishing card. Then, another card that is not a dwarf, so Ida a main Epsivni, an elven mage that starts at 5 power for 6 provisions, and has basically a utility function in this deck. So if you deploy her on the range row, you give an allied unit vitality for 4 turns, or, more importantly, if you deploy her on the melee row, you can purify a unit. Why this card? Well, I have one tutor in this deck that guarantees you to pull her for only 8 provisions, um, is in Grimm's Council, and that's why she's in the deck. There's another card in the deck that is basically a help for the tutor, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we have Pauli Dahlberg, another dwarf for uh, which starts at 6 power, allows you to move a unit to the other row. So basically another um, utility card that allows you to move like a row locked uh, engine card from your opponent. Uh, and on order, he has an order ability for the next turn, allows you to give an allied unit another two points of armor. Again, we benefit heavily from getting armor, so uh, definitely a very good card in this deck. Then probably one of the strongest cards in this deck because of the cool extra effect. This is called Sultan Slimy, so there's actually three Sultan cards in this deck, including this one. Sultan's Company, a nature card that allows you to spawn three rowdy dwarves in an allied row. That's not that much to talk about, but if you control Sultan, you give one armor to all dwarves on that row. So that means that if you have a full row, uh, or just three missing spaces of course, and you play this card on that row, you will boost uh, all of them with one armor, if you have Zoltan. There's two physical Zoltan character cards in this deck, so you should be able to pull this off rather nicely. Then we have the other card that I mentioned that I wanted to include in this because of the tutor card. Dunka, four power, uh, one armor. She is a dryad, has veil and has seal on her order ability, which allows you to damage an enemy unit by three. But as long as you don't use that order ability at the end of your turn, she will boost a random Squiretail unit in your hand by one. This is actually a cool card because it, even if your opponent steals it, like for Nilfgaard for example, uh, if your opponent steals it, you will not, uh, they will not gain the benefit of the ability because it boosts a random Squiatel unit in your hand. And of course, Nilfgaard won't have a Squiatel unit in their hand. But hand boosting is very nice. Uh, there's not that much synergy in this deck for it, but she is a good engine card that doesn't show the points that she's giving. And she can also be pulled by Isengrim's Council. Then Xavier Moran, five power, of course, one armor because we, uh, well, we have armor as a start, which is very good because as long as he's on the melee row you gain one armor whenever you get uh, whenever you play a dwarf and if he's armored at the end of your turn which he will be by default he will boost himself by one so basically a point engine that is very very nice uh, as long as he's on the melee row i think the barricade ability also triggers needs to be on the melee row i'm not 100 sure but I think so. And now we have the tutor that I was talking about. So Isengrim's Council is basically one of the lowest provision tutors that you can get and allows you to look at a random dryad, uh, dwarf or elf and elf from your deck and then play one boosted by two. 
The Dryad and Elf is guaranteed. There's only one Elf in this deck, that was Ida, and there's only one Dryad in the deck, and that's Dunka. So you can get one of those guaranteed, and then of course another Dwarf, and you might get lucky with that, but don't count on it. Um, but the Dwarf could definitely be something uh, gold as well, if you're lucky. But again, this is stunning. It allows you to pull a card. It's basically utility because of the either the hand boosting with Dunka or the Purify with Ida. Um, and still giving you a good amount of uh, points. Because even Dunka will be at 6 points with Isengrim's Council, and Ida will be at 7 alongside with her ability. So, very, very good card in this deck. Now we're starting to get into the very powerful gold cards. So, Figgis Merluzo, 5 power, 3 armor in our case, has the defender status, and on the ploy he spawns a Rowdy Dwarf in this row. So, another 2 point uh, token on the field. Only 7 points, but with that 3 armor, he's very, very good at protecting his dwarven brethren. And then we're also getting into another part of this archetype, which is um, very unique. Because there's two cards in this deck that actually has have resilience. Resilience means that at the end of the round that he was played on, he will lose that status effect, but he will remain on the board for the next round. So if you put Gabor Zigrin on the melee row, he will gain resilience. If you pull him later and you don't have the benefit of resilience anymore because you got the last round, for example, you can put him on the range row and make him immune as well, which is even better because immune means that he can't be targeted. He also have a passive. He also has a passive ability that whenever you play a dwarf, you boost yourself by one. So yeah, that's going to be basically every turn with this deck. Uh, very, very extremely powerful card. Then we have Yarp and Zigrin, one of the Krinfrit Reef. Well, not from the Krinfrit Reefers, but from the same story. It's it's he's a dragon hunter basically. Um, six power, nine provisions, and on deploy he damages an enemy unit by three, already giving you nine points. But if he is barricaded, so if he has armor at the end of your turn, you will lose that armor and then boost himself by the amount of armor he had. So he starts at one armor automatically, so this card is always at least 10 points. Give him extra armor at the next round and he will also transform that into points. So this is a good card to dump all your armor onto by the end of the round. So basically giving you something that is very similar to Harold Gord in point potential, um, but on a just normal unit that also gives you a little bit of damage. So just a, a very good card for this archetype overall. Then we have our uh, first Zoltan card, four power, four armor, in our case, even five armor, but he also has resilience. So he stays on the board for one round. On deploy, he also boosts his adjacent dwarves by two. So giving you eight points, a lot of armor and resilience. That's why he costs 10 provisions, but he is definitely worth it. And remember, he will trigger uh, Zoltan's company if you have him on the field. Then we got Nova Gradient Justice. Of course, we couldn't uh, ignore this card in this deck. Basically one of the cards that functions for both Squirtel and um, Syndicate, but very, very powerful here because you can play um, the Defenders, I think they're called. No, the Volunteers. The Volunteers on the field as well. So you get the Cleaver's Muscle. He has a shield giving you a guaranteed uh, Dwarf for the Volunteers as well because you play one Volunteer and then the second one will be pulled from the deck. So basically, if you play Nova Creating Justice, almost always go for the Volunteers, giving you 13 points in one go and double tinning, because those two volunteers are out of your deck, so you have more consistency in your deck from that point onwards. Then, the original leader card. The leader card that we haven't really talked about yet, but Bruver Hawk, 6 power, 11 provisions, so that's a lot. But on the ploy he gains 1 armor for every dwarf in your hand, which can be a lot on its own. He also starts with 1 armor because of Mahakam Forge, and on Barricade, so if he has armor at the end of your turn, you boost all dwarves on his row, that have armor by one. This is why Armorer's Workshop is so important. You can start filling out your row with dwarves, then play Zoltan's company. If you have Zoltan on the field, all those dwarves will gain armor. And then you play Brother Hook, and he will just boost all those units on that row by one every single turn. Very powerful engine card, provided you, that you can keep him alive. Because uh, he is always going to be a target. But because of the extra armor, it's also very hard to take him out. He still needs to have armor if you want to allow him to uh, trigger his ability. But there's plenty of cards in this deck that give you armor. So uh, that should not be too much of a problem. 
uh, probably the strongest card in this deck. But not to be outdone, Zoltan Warrior is here as well. So 6 power, 1 uh, armor, but he will gain 2 because of the Mahakam Forge ability. And he has a double ability. So if you play him on the melee row, he will spawn 2 more Rowdy Dwarves. So giving you a quick way of filling that row if you want to go that route. But to my mind, the stronger ability is his ranged ability, which boosts all allied Rowdy Dwarves by 2. Why is that stronger? Because if you've managed to play the first Zoltan, so the Resilient Zoltan, so this one, you also have Zoltan on the field. If you then play Zoltan's company, all the dwarves will already have armor, so you don't need to waste stuff on that. And you have three more um, of those rowdy dwarves, giving you four if you have to play Figus Meluso as a defender. Um, there he is. So that gives you four, so four times two is eight points, along with the six points that Zoltan has on his own, and that gives you 14 points, which is probably the better way to play this. But if you don't have Zoltan's company, you can play Zoltan Warrior on the melee row, giving you three units, and that's also a very good start for Brover Hoke. So just two ways of playing this card, and both are just equally as powerful. And then as a stratagem, we use uh, the Crystal Skull just to allow us to uh, protect one engine card. Usually going to be the Chariot, but a Veil so we can't be locked. Um, so that's our stratagem card. And that's it for this uh, deck overview. Let's head into an example match. And there we go, our first match is against a Battle Trance deck. That is going to be interesting. We don't deal that much damage, so that is actually pretty good against a deck like this. Because those are going to be uh, yeah, capable of taking a hit themselves as well. Um, let's see, we actually start out rather well. We don't have any volunteers, which is good. Um, this is actually really good. I want to see if I can get rid of Barclay Owls, because the row isn't going to be filled that much. That is pretty good as well. Um, I don't have a use for Armourous Workshop just yet. Let me get a volunteer. I want to get rid of those. Ah, we got a chariot. Okay. That is very good. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. Um, because the chariot allows you to have an engine card at the start. So if you put that over here, that's usually my starting play. Put Crystal Skull on the chariot so it is protected, giving you 8 power and 1 armor. And just an engine that gives you armor continuously. And then we got Darren damage himself by 3, so that's a 4 power card. And he discards Morkfark. Okay, so giving him 9 points in one go. Um, I could actually use the Pyrotechnician now. Might actually not be that bad. Uh -oh. So let's use the Pyrotechnician. Put that armor on there so we can definitely deal 4 damage at random on the other side of the board. There's 2 units that can actually get that damage. Heimei Skeld is also going to take that 4 damage. And that's going to be another 4, I suppose. Yeah, with the Skirmisher. Okay, so that's good. I can just tap the Pyrotechnician and work from there. So there we go. Hitting Morkvark, and then we... Do I go for the Berserker? I think I should go for the Berserker. So let's put the Berserker over here. Give him an extra point of armor. Give him six armor. Basically allowing him to ping uh, a unit every single turn for the rest of this round. Because six armor is a lot. Um, and we'll definitely just go through that in one go. Our opponent is deciding going with Geralt Quen immediately. Probably going for... Huh. Eskel Pathfinder, so that's going to be shielded, but that's only one point per turn, right? We basically have the same thing here. Uh, let's put Dunka on the field, giving her a little bit of extra armor as well, so she can survive, although she won't survive a Giga Scorpion decoction, but it's something at least. We get an extra point in hand. And we have a Resilience unit in our hand as well, so there we go, we got Scorpion Decoction. Zoltan Chive is very important here, because if we use Zoltan Chive, um, we actually keep him on the board for the next turn, basically blocking our opponent from dry passing, uh, because we already have a, a card on the field. We're not going to use that just yet. Uh, Ascal Pathfinder is, by the way, locked to the melee row, so if I use Polly Dahlberg now, that's uh, actually absolutely perfect, and then just give the uh, Berserker another point of armor. So there we go. Eskel is completely down, so they kind of wasted a very high-powered card there, because that's both Geralt Quen and Eskel Pathfinder gone. Golden Frot boosting Darren as well. With a heal... Um, I probably should play Nova Gradient Justice now, get the thinning going with the Mahakam Volunteers. 
Uh, we don't need the row stack right now because there's no point in doing that because we actually removed part layouts. And then I could just armor up the pyrotechnician and give the uh, Raldi Dwarf an extra armor. So now everything is protected from any damage that we would receive. So damage dealing abilities will be not that useful. We might get a pass now. I think we still have the upper hand, but basically nine points ahead because the Berserker will hit again at the end of my next turn. So I think they might actually pass. They won't. And that's a half power Jutta. Why would you do that? Um, let's put Zoltan down. Uh, let's put Zoltan down. I have the other Zoltan if I need to. And then we can armor up the Berserker again. If they don't pass now, they're basically in trouble. Because then I can just pass and I have a unit on the field even if we lose that round. Which it doesn't look like we will. Jutta is probably played now because they can resurrect it next time. But that doesn't seem like that strong of a play. There we go. There's the pass. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pass as well, obviously. But now, if I get Gobbo Zigrin, I'll probably play him as well. Although they can destroy him, it's probably not that useful. I'm gonna get a full hand anyway. They need to go over those four points. Another thing is that you lose armor on Resil after the resilience have been has been removed. So that is interesting to note. So this is only gonna pull Ida or something else. I don't need to play a unit. The Armor's Workshop gives us plenty of extra armor. The Dwarven Chariot. Hmm. I'm looking for the, the stronger gold cards, of course, now. Um, Armor's Workshop is pretty good, but I need a few other cards to work with it. Dwarven Chariot is going to be better. And there's Gabor. Hmm. There's Gabor. Gabor is good. Gabor is very good. Especially if I... But I'm going to play him as an immune unit next. Yeah, I'm not going to... I'm not going to waste the card. And then we got a Bear Witcher who will just barely be five points. Yeah, that was... Very close. Uh, now, what I'm looking for is... Definitely Bruver. If I can get Bruver, that would be really cool, but probably Gwent is not going to like me. No, it's not. Um, I'm going to get rid of Ida because I can pull her with Isengrim's Council. Barclay Isles is also good. Uh, do I get rid of Mahakam Guards or... No, the Miner can go. Okay. No Bruver Hawk this time. So he's still in the deck with, uh, ooh, with Sultan's Company as well. Not that we all we also need Sultan's Company and Groover Hawk to basically play the best we can. Um, and then we get two discards, so that's probably going to be at least four points on top of that, because they still have one skirmisher. And we get two discards, and that is basically nothing. Nothing at all. Interesting. I'm going to play Gobboy on the range row, because he's immune of course now. And he can't be targeted by anything else, so if our opponent wants to start dealing damage, they will be, well, out of luck. Oh, we got Delirium. Okay, never mind. That was that was really good. Okay. I discarded the Chrome Mother, by the way. That is interesting. I should have probably started with the Dwarven Chariot. Uh, we can do that right now. Do I put that on the melee row? Yeah, I'm going to have to. So that's going to be an extra... Dwarf. Yeah, we'll have to see. Because technically we could still get Bruver Hawk with Isengrim's Council. It's gonna be really lucky if we do. But we still could. We definitely still could. That's gonna be another discard, so that is fine. No extra four points for them. So they're basically draining their deck. Let's put the Defender down now, giving us an extra Rowdy Dwarf. With the armor on the defender giving them nine points that need to be overcome right now. Sad that Gobber is down. Gobber was a really good engine card. Ah, we got the banish on the defender. Okay. Uh, let's put down the berserker then. So that's another engine card that's just going to keep ticking down. If my mouse wants to work here. Doesn't seem like it does anymore. And we got Gerd on top of that. So that's basically damaging everything. Not that much of a problem just yet. I'm going to see if I can get him out here. So let's use Isengrim's Council. We, we get extremely lucky and we get Bruver, Bruver Hawk here. 
so let's put them in between. Let's uh, boost one of the Rowdy Dwarves with some armor. And that is going to be three points on top of everything else. So the only card that's really problematic against um, this deck is Geralt Erden. Um, I'm going to actually... I have two extra Rowdy Dwarves if I want to... Yeah, let's do. Let's put Zoltan over here, giving us extra dwarves. Um, is it worth boosting one of the dwarves again? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. No, it's not. Let's do that. So that's four points every single time. We got Golden Fruit. That's not going to do much. That's not going to do much. Let's put. Let's put the Mahakam Guard down. So that's going to be another 10 points. Brewer Hawk is still here. I'm actually going to... Hmm, do I do that or not? Boost one of the units. No, I'm going to get more points out of... Um, out of Yarp and Sigrun with the leader ability anyway. So that should be fine. They summon Jutta, I suppose. So there we go. 12 points on the board. Nothing on the extra heal. Then we get Yarp and Sigrun. I'm going to put him on... Burn a brand. Um, and then I'm gonna boost him with the um, yeah, with that. With tempering. Just because we get a 14 point unit on the board then. If the last card is Erd, then I'm boned. If it's not, then we should be good to go. I'm guessing the last card is gonna be Draco Turtle. But we're already double up on the points, so I don't think. That's going to make too much of a difference now. And we get a Purify and a Reset. Okay, so if I didn't use Tempering there, that would have been even better. But yeah, even with Murderum, they're not going to... They're not going to overcome this, so let's just put this all nuts. That's, that's all. Oh, fine. There we go. 20 points ahead. And that's uh, my fifth win with Cortel, apparently, for one of the challenges. There we go. That was against Battle Trans. Let's do another one. And in our second match, we face the monsters with overwhelming hunger. That can actually be a lot of things these days, although that wish is more popular. Definitely because of the change in Urn of Shadows, basically, because there's not much else that has changed towards um, that wish uh, abilities. I don't think I'm going to be needing the Pyrotechnician, although it would be nice to have that extra defense. Um, but no, I'm going to get rid of him and then get rid of the Mahakam guard. We actually have a lot of good cards again. Let's get rid of the Mahakam Guard, and then we get Dunka. Okay. That's fine. That is absolutely fine. So basically, again, Dwarven Chariot into the Berserker. And then maybe even Novigrad Justice. But, start of the round, what are they going to start with? With the Urn of Shadows. Uh, they could go for Imperial Manticore, so I'm going to have to be careful about that every single time. So if we just play one of the... Uh, the Dwarven Chariot gives us a Rowdy Dwarf of two points, so he can be the sacrifice there. And they start with an Archispor. That is absolutely fine. So the Archispor actually gained the ability of the Foglet these days. Uh, so let's do that. And that gives us our Armor Engine back. So we are... We have a very good starting point, as I should say. And then we got the Cyclops dealing four damage on... Oh. Two damage on the Rowdy Dwarf. Okay, that is because they, yeah, they definitely want to have control over what the lowest unit is going to be. Um, I'm fine with that, I think, because we can. I'm gonna just play over Gradient Justice now and get the Mahakam Volunteers on the row. Oh, we don't have a dwarf. Yeah, god damn it, I misplayed there. That was a uh, Pepe got play. God damn it. So that's nine points down the drain. That was completely my fault. And I basically screwed up my entire deck because of that. Because that would have been two extra cards gone. And now it's not. So that's a Maruna play. But yeah, but basically we fucked everything up. <laughs> we get another Cyclops destroying Maruna. And they can definitely guarantee that they get the Berserker now. And that is going to just trigger a pass for me. That is definitely going to trigger a pass for me. I don't want to see that continuing any further than it already has. 
And we lost the round with flying colors. Yeah, that was sad. That was a complete misplay from me. That Nova Great Injustice. I need to be careful. I need to have a dwarf on the field before Nova Great Injustice actually triggers completely. Um, we get Armorer's Workshop, which is not that useful right now. I can get rid of Ida. I can get rid of Armorer's Workshop. Maybe get another Pirate Technician. Fine. And we get Haunt immediately. That is a daring move, I should say. Um, so let's go with Dwarven Chariot again, because of course the Manticore is still in play. But they're definitely going to push the Death Wish over here. I mean, it's it's their, their, their right. They can definitely do that. And then we got Whispering Hillock onto the Foglet, giving them... Ooh, Fog. Wouldn't have even thought of putting that into a deck. The Foglet, uh, the Fog is going to hit the lowest unit there, so that is going to be fine. I'm going to try and get Dunka down now, and she can get extra armored up. Giving us some extra points in our hands if we ever need to. And if that hits Dunka now, she won't actually get damaged at all. Although there could still be a Parasite in their hands. But I'm guessing they're going to go full force onto the, uh, the Dead Wish units. And they'll bother with something like Parasites. Dead Wish is really strong if you start out. So if you're on blue coin, we get Karantir onto... What exactly? Onto an Imperial Manticore maybe? Yeah. Onto Imperial Manticore. So that's going to destroy Dunka. They are very lucky with that. Very lucky indeed. Uh, let's get the Pyrotechnician down. And give him an extra point of armor. Because I know that that uh, Dwarven Chariot... I mean, the Imperial Manticore doesn't really gel well with uh, Fog. Because Fog is going to damage the lowest unit every single time and so you're kind of blocked from using the imperial manticore like that um let's get the miner do we put the miner on the field yeah let's put the miner on the field here um give the i could go with the pyrotechnician another armor point and then double click the pyrotechnician goes on to garantir so that's a full four points still only seven points behind it's not the end of the world and we can start using the Defender in a minute. I think I'm going to go Defender and then Brover. Because I definitely want to get that first round. Uh, well, that second round now. So let's put the Defender down. Uh, give the Defender a little bit of extra armor with the Dwarven Chariot since it's still alive. And let's keep that two power, uh, that two armor over there still. So now we get that love higher Vampire. Yeah, I definitely need to put Brover down now. Because uh, the points are going to swing all over the place now. That's going to be a whole lot of points. But we're going to follow suit. We're going to definitely follow suit. So let's put Brover on the board now. Uh, boost that one single Rowdy Dwarf over here. And that's going to give us uh, right now five points every single turn. And I have some more uh, fun stuff in the bag. And now we get a pass, okay. So that means I can now put uh, Zoltan on here. Zoltan is going to give us two extra units. One over there and one over there armored up. And that is basically going to give us enough points to bridge the gap in one go. There we go. So even though that was a very point slammy play from our opponent, we gained the upper hand by just doing better. Um, the only problem we have now is that I don't have a lot of low power units and there's, that's where Sultan's company comes in. That was actually superbly ideal. Uh, do I move another unit? What do I still have? Armourer's Workshop and okay. Well, it's going to be close. I'm going to start with Sultan's company so they don't have a good... Uh, a good target for those that one Imperial Manticore that is still in there. But other than that, this might actually hurt. And it's gonna hurt because I've completely fluffed with Novigrade Injustice. Okay, I go first. So as I said, do I do Sultan's company? I'm I'm gonna have to, just to have that extra that extra bit of uh, control over here. Um do I armor up one? Because with a double wear cat they can actually damage that enough. 
But I'm going to get more points out of Yarp and Ziggering with the Tempering, so I'm not going to. So that's just Andrega Larva. There could still be a Werkat down there. But now uh, I'm pretty safe to use Yarp and Ziggering. So he will still boost four times, so he's going to go up to nine points. And next up is going to be Zoltan, then Yarpen, and then the two uh, row boosters. So it's still going to be all on the same row, but with the extra armor support we should be able to go... We get a Knight Raid next. We don't really need to use the damage on that, so let's just use uh, Zoltan right here. Giving us basically nine points, yeah, nine points. With the uh, Gabor triggering as well. We still have two overwhelming hunger charges. I wonder where those are gonna go. Because they've used Maruna, one charge of Manticore. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Because the rats, of course, are plentiful. They still could have more food. Um, but let's just use Yarp and Zigrin now then, I suppose. I can damage the were rats so we can't spawn any more extra rats. In the next turn, at least. But that's all I'm going to be able to do. So Barclay Els is going to be 11 points. And then the Mahakam Guard is going to be 11 points as well. And then we have still Tempering. Two more points on Gobbo Zikrin. So that's 24, 29, 31 points in total. So there's the Imperial Manticore killing one of the Rowdy Dwarves, the Lower Dwarf. That was definitely what we were expecting. It is equal at the moment. Which is also interesting. Uh, let's use the Mahakam Guard now. So that's 8-8. Eight, eight. I hope there's not an Urden in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it's it I'm gonna lose regardless if there's Urden on the field, but I don't wanna get triggered by um Igni too much, because that would have been 16 points and now it's only 14 points. So and we got Koralti Heatwave, so that's 14 points gone. Uh, and now we have Barclay Owls, is still gonna be about 10 points. I'm um, gonna boost Zoltan. Yeah, Zoltan up higher, up to 10, so that's 10, 9, 8. So that's 14 points. 14 points they need to do to go over that. It is monster, so they definitely have the option to do so. So that's 3 more points, so now they need to do 11 points. And it's only gonna have to be 9 points because of the Andrega Larva still being there. And they don't. They don't. <laughs> Even with fucking up Novigrading Justice, we won that. So yeah, definitely keep in mind that if you play Novigrading Justice, you need to have a Dwarf on the field. So as you might have noticed, this deck is very powerful and very strong, even if you make a mistake, as I just did. That was completely my fault. But uh, so yeah, Novigrading Justice. Keep, keep in mind that for Novigrading Justice, you need to have a Dwarf on the field if you already control a Dwarf. So the Chariot doesn't count, even though it's filled with Dwarfs, it doesn't count as a Dwarf. Um, so that was a mistake I made in the last round. That, that was completely... Uh, completely my fault. But very strong deck regardless. The only... Problem that you might have is that if you ever face Geralt Urden, you're done for. There's nothing you can do about that. This deck is extremely weak against uh, Urden. Um, Igni you can kind of work around, but Urden is just going to reset all the dwarves that you've worked so hard to get up there. Um, and you always need to row stack. You need to row stack for Brewer, you need to row stack for uh, Barclay Owls, and you need to row stack for the Mahakam Guard. So... It's almost inevitable that you know, you're going to face this problem. You could spread it out if you're guaranteed to expect the Geralt Urden a little bit so you uh, mitigate the damage a little bit. But even then, you're going to lose points regardless. So Urden is the, uh, yeah, the Achilles heel of this deck. But without that, if you're not thinking about that, this deck is extremely powerful. A good alternative for traps on Square Hotel. I think it's even better than traps. Because of the way that you actually have control over what you're doing. And you're not guessing that your opponent is going to misplay or play something that factors into your traps really well. This is just this is just one of my new favorite Squire Tile decks, to be honest. Um, and I named it, I, I gave it a funny name, so that's always very fun as well. Zoltan Slammy. So with that done, I'm really curious about your opinion on this deck. I know dwarves have been quite the thing over the last few months, but it's one of the first times that I actually played it and I really, really enjoy my time with this deck. So what do you think of this deck? Uh, is there something that I can do to improve it even further? Let me know in the comment section down below, because that's what we're here for after all, helping each other out. So thank you guys enormously for watching this episode of Grand Edge, and I'd like to see you all in the next episode. 
next week probably, most likely. Thanks enormously for watching and stay nutty.